enjoy a lot of epic moments here on the channel, but I think this one just might reign supreme. We might have to crown it the king of all epic moments because we're not only reviewing two generations of Piston Cop Racers today, we're comparing all three complete, finished generation slash eras of piston cup racers from cars one and cars three and i also tossed in a few surprises here that might take us back even to the 1950s so i'm super excited to finally be able to do this video for you guys obviously that was made possible by the recent release of the next gen carbon cyber racer jim reverick in case l of 2021 singles Many of us anticipate him to be the last new next gen and also piss and cut racer in general to be released from Mattel. Now, many of you guys might wonder why is that they still have the Apple racers from Cars 3 to release? Well, because of the fact that Mac iCar, the stock car from Cars 1, was only released in that monstrous 36 car motor speedway of the South set in 2008, and that was only available to Redline Club members, and they have never attempted anything like that since, I really doubt they would do that for Cars 3, and also, that was two years after Cars 1, and now it's almost what, four and a half, five years after Cars 3. And it just doesn't seem like the demand for something that big, that expensive is currently present. So either way, if they release those, great. If not, I have the customs of them available to show in this video. Super excited to show them to you guys. You guys might have already seen them in reviews on my channel. And also, there's the contingency that Maybe Pixar might make a fourth movie or maybe even in that road trip series coming to Disney Plus in the fall of next year, we might get a glimpse at further generations of Piston Cop racers. I don't expect that road trip series to focus much on racing, but who knows, you might see a little TV clip in the background that shows a fifth generation shiny wax racer or something like that. I would not doubt it one bit. So anyways... I feel like we have a very complete, like it's a gift to us. It's wrapped nice with a bow on top of it. And I'm going to show all of them, all of them. This is going to be a giant video. And due to just space restrictions, I mean, there's over like 120 cars I'm showing you guys today. We have to do it in a very calculated way. I'm going to break up every group, basically. I'm going to make groups out of them. Four groups, and there's going to probably be about like an average of 10 sponsors per group. And after each group, I will cut just to clear out the table a little bit here. And we're going to start with, in my opinion, more of the bulky sponsors like Lightning McQueen, Dynaco here. I have a lot of stuff to show you guys, a lot of surprises for that stuff. And then as we get to group D, as I call it, the fourth group, we get into some of the more exciting sponsors, in my opinion, you know how I like to do it. I like to save the best for laughs, but that is three minutes and 20 seconds of rambling about three minutes and 19 seconds too long. So anyways, let's get right into it with none other than Rusty's. The Rusty's sponsor, obviously characterized mostly by Lightning McQueen. I'm just going to roll these guys back here so we have enough room to show who I want to show. A lot of people think, you know, there's not much to show for Rusty's because of the fact that McQueen raced for Rusty's in all the movies and only Cruz got a little taste of it in the Florida 500. But actually, really what I see this video as, as showing like the evolution of the sponsors. And of course, that starts with the Cars 1 Lightning McQueen here, the classic. And because this video, you know, could end up being five hours long if I really reviewed everyone and you guys I pretty much reviewed all these cars before so I'm just going to kind of show them I hope you guys understand that I also did a video several years ago showing the stock cars cars one cars three because they actually completed that line or those two groups much earlier than the next gens and I'll leave that link in the description and card suggestion pop up but I also only just showed them in that video as well so anyways after the original cars one Rusty's McQueen. You get the Hudson Hornet Piston Cop Lightning McQueen that is featured at the beginning of Cars 2. Same body style, but then it changes slightly. He gets a new spoiler when he enters the World Grand Prix there. Actually, very much so changes the model as well. He looks a little slimmer to me. Then Cars 3, we get a couple paint jobs. Of course, we have the 
Rusty's one, as Mattel calls it, that was at the beginning of Cars 3. Some people might want to include the Rusty's Racing Center version, but because he never actually raced in the Piston Cup with that, I am not going to include it. And then you have the Cars 3 Lightning McQueen here, the very classic final design, final boss version where he has the flames back. You know, obviously this was just the bolt and the flames from his World Grand Prix version make a return here. And he looks really cool in my opinion. And he also has this slimmer model that is different from everything prior Cars 3. I do want to show what's his face here. Fabulous Lightning McQueen because we don't know. It's possible he could have raced in this paint job, although I doubt it, but we really don't know. This is the last paint job we see McQueen in, in Cars 3. Now, of course, we can't forget about Cruz. She briefly wore Rusty's 95 during the second half of the Florida 500 race, but then she quickly shifted over to Dynaco when Tax offered her that position, and we'll show Dynaco Cruz in a couple moments here. And then I also have this custom next-gen 95 more so a next gen McQueen than a next gen Rusties. And it's just kind of for fun that I wanted to show you guys that. It also looked pretty cool in the thumbnail, I thought. All right, let's move on to Dynaco, another very prominent sponsor that starts with a very, very main character, The King. Of course, voiced by Richard Petty. One of a bunch of Piston Cops has one of the most unique Piston Cup models, probably the most unique model, I think. You know, all the other ones like Jackson Storm, Cruz, McQueen, Chick Hicks, they really power in the shadow of the king here. And so then we progress on to Cal Weathers, his nephew, who was originally called Hank. I have this variant of him, this very early variant where those roof edges show his name to be actually Hank Weathers. It's very hard to see because it's not applied that well there. That's a good angle. They quickly switched that though and corrected it to Cal Weathers and also made the blue a little bit more vibrant, as you can see there. And then at the end of Cars 3, we never see a race with it exactly, but of course, Dynaco Cruz Ramirez changing the main color of the sponsor to yellow there. And then we also have gotten this NASCAR Cruz Ramirez that kind of shows a more advanced version of that with a little bit more blue back in the paint job and her just looking a little bit more, I don't know, advanced for the times. All right, who should we go to next? Let's go to an easy, quick one. And that, of course, is Nitroid. <laughs> I was actually going to go with Chick Hicks, but we're going to wait and save him for a little bit. I also might grab a custom next-gen HTB racer just so I could have that in here because we all know there is going to be a real next gen HTB that is a parallel or reflection of who is it oh Kyle Busch in the NASCAR Walmart exclusive line but here we have Nitroid and that includes Aiken Axler here on the right Phil Tankson in the middle and then Tim Treadless I love his metallic orange there set him off to the side Vinyl Toupee is one of my favorite sponsors, and that includes here Krusty Rotor, very much so different from the next two here in terms of paint job. It's got like a pinkish lavender, and then in the middle, Rev Rotages completely diverges with a white and blue paint job. And then Will Rush brings back the purple a little bit more, and I think he looks really cool in kind of like a metallic paint job, and also has like some gold trim to him, which I find really, really neat. One of my favorite all-time sponsors. Here's another one of my favorites that actually was amplified in Cars 3 by both of the racers there. Let's get these in chronological order. So Todd Marcus is both of the stock cars. He is one of few that made the jump to Cars 3. And I absolutely love his new paint job here where he has the blue and the turquoise. Just it's so different and unexpected that I love it. And then... Jonas Carver's here, the next gen, has a little bit more of a conservative paint job. But he was just released in 2020. All right. Here's one of the original sponsors, Leakless. Claude Scruggs was released way back in 2006, along with Aiken Axler as well. Kind of kicked off the Pissing Cup sponsors that weren't main characters. 
And so you have Brian Spark there in the middle, who was just released this year in the singles after only being in launchers. And then George Newman there on the right, who has only been released in a Walmart five pack. A lot of people are hoping for a re-release of him. I'm sure it'll happen. I'm confident it will. He's the only next gen that doesn't have contingency sponsors, which is actually accurate to the movie, but we could probably all assume that it was not meant to be that way. Next up is Shiny Wax. So here's another one where the driver is the same. It's Darren Leadfoot in both Cars and Cars 3. And he probably has the most similar paint job. Like it really didn't change all that much. Whereas I'd say it did for No Stall. And also cars like Ernie Gearson, who we'll get to in a little bit. And then you have the next gen Conrad Camber with an amazing metallic gold star there. I really like his paint job a lot. And I think Shiny Wax has a nice vibrant green in general. Definitely spruces it up because there's a lot of greens. I'd say in like the Piston Cup field that aren't that attractive, like Clutch Aid. I don't know. There's some blues as well, Lil Torquey Pistons. Those are some of my least favorite sponsors. Here's yet another driver that makes the Cars 1, Cars 3 jump. Dirksen Diagostino, a little Italian here. Now, I love his Cars 3 paint job. I absolutely adore that two-tone gray and black spoiler back there. I think that's pretty unique. And... I'd say his paint job also changed quite a bit. He's got gray rims now. And then the next gen is Steve Slick LePage with some metallic foil decals on him there. He's only been released in the next gen racers four pack. I think he did get released in another multi-pack, but he still remains pretty rare. All right, moving on to RPM now. We have the original Winford Bradford Rutherford, the longest name I think ever for a Piston Cup racer. And then you have Bruce Miller, who's one of the most basic names ever for a Piston Cup racer. Really like him. And I think these, I would say, like if somebody asked me, Disney Docket, what are the most similar paint jobs between Cars 1, Cars 3, Stock Cars? I'd say it's either RPM or Gaskets. And we'll get to those. We'll get to Gaskets later on in the video, of course. And then we have now a very different paint job for the next gen. Barry DePello here, kind of like a bluish purple. No one has changed numbers yet. I will try to remember and indicate that to you guys when we get to that point with like Easy Idle. Well, I guess Dynaco changed numbers, but <laughs> that one was a little weird because they changed numbers multiple times because there are so many different drivers. Here we have Ponchi Wipeout. I didn't realize this group A, this first group, had so many of the same drivers in it because Ponchi Wipeout, again, is the driver in both movies for the stock car. He has a pretty similar paint job. And then there's this variant for the Cars 3 version that has yellow rims instead of black rims. And then there's a Thailand variant where he has the yellow rims and then instead of these black eyelids, they are blue. I do not have that version on hand right now it doesn't appear i am sorry and then here is the next gen paul conrad who i really like it's kind of a different type of paint job going for the white with the uh, red and blue accents pretty nice last but not least of this first group here is htb for hostile takeover bank featuring the main villain quote unquote in cars one chick hicks I feel like there's more of an internal conflict in that movie than an external one. But there he is. Here's a next-gen custom of him with the stash. And then here's more of a custom HTB racer. I really love this custom. This one's just so perfectly done. And I have reviews on both of these on my channel. But we'll obviously have a much more official one when Mattel does the NASCAR Kyle Busch version from that Walmart exclusive line here. Probably in a couple months. But I'll be right back with everything ready for group two. All right, we're back and we are going to jump right in with some big boy sponsors, Sputter Stop. Now, this is one of the ones that I have a little surprise for. You might be able to see it, but it's actually the retro generation Thomasville legend. You know, one of the racers that raced with Doc Hudson back in the old days. Randy Lawson. Now he technically is a Sputter Stop sponsored racer, as you can see right here, which I just find so cool. 
I honestly wish there were more of the new sponsors on these older racers, you know, because we do see signs for Leakless and Gasprin among some other ones in the Thomasville arena there. And yet we only have Randy Lawson and who we'll get to in a couple moments here. I'll just keep him a surprise for now. But yeah, there's Randy Lawson, a late 2019 release. Pretty cool. Doesn't really have a paint shot that matches the new era of Sputter Stop that encompasses here Murray Clutchburn. He is both of these guys as well. They also have pretty similar paint jobs. And then up next is Sheldon Shifter. He deviates kind of a lot, as you can see here. He's got more of a brown and a pastel turquoise. But I like him. He's pretty cool. Not one of my favorites, though. Next up is N2O Cola. So this is one of my favorite sponsors, I'd say. It kind of fell off for me a little bit with H.G. Hollis because I don't like the green as much. I like the purple. I like Parker Brakeson the most. I think his shade of purple is just the most pure. But Manny Flywheel, the car's one stock car, is pretty neat as well. I absolutely adore the fact he has like five window bars in a pink color back there. It's really cool to me. And now you have H.J. Hollis, of course. Now, there are a lot of variants of these guys by now. There's Thailand, Vietnam variants of many, many of these racers. But I don't, first of all, have all those. And second, if I were to show them all, man, we would be here forever. This video is already going to be very, very long. All right. Now, here's one where I will show the variant because I think it's a little bit more substantial. Shifty Drug. Kevin Shift right here went from red to pink in 2015, which I think is much more accurate and it looks better. And then now this is the first time I'm showing you guys a NASCAR next gen. I was debating whether or not to include the NASCAR racers in this video. I obviously did show you the Danica Cruz, but this is the first time where we have one that is basically, you know, one of the missing sponsors from Cars 3. There is no Shifty Drug stock car and there was no Shifty Drug Next Gen in Cars 3. This is strictly from the NASCAR line, emulating William Byron in real life. So I did decide ultimately to show them just because I want this video to be as complete as it possibly can, showing pretty much every sponsor in every iteration. So yeah, Shifty Drug here, William Byron gets super dark. We go from pink to maroon and a little bit of gold there. I'm not a big fan of this guy, as I've expressed before. But he gets the job done. Now, Taco Mint is one of the saddest, saddest stories that we have. We only have one. He's literally like the only one, pretty much, we have one racer for because they have not done a missing next gen in the NASCAR line yet. They kind of took a wild, drastic left turn out of nowhere and made Kyle Busch the HTB racer, whereas everyone thought he was going to be Taco Mint. And I feel like I need to do like a 10 minute rant on that in a future video, but that's all I'll say in this video. Now here we have Vitaline that starts off with James Clean Air, one of the few stock cars that doesn't have the mustache grill. Then we have Brick Yardley who actually gets some speaking lines in Cars 3. And Chase Raislett who also gets speaking lines because he's modeled or he's voiced by Chase Elliott. And that is also why he has this next gen NASCAR version as well that came out this year probably one of the greenest sponsors you can get like it's just green 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 whereas some of these other ones you know they go from purple to green or they're like turquoise to brown or rev and go blue to green this one green 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 i'm okay with that i'm okay with it all right who should we go to next let's go to a big boy re Revolting. Certainly not actually revolting. I'm actually very attracted to revolting. I like the red coloring. Actually, move. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Yep. This is one of the ones that has a Thomasville Racing Legend racer, Leroy Hemming, the rookie. He prominently has revolting there, as you can see, which I think is really cool. He does have a little bit of red to him, and I think this guy looks a little bit more fitting with the revolting color scheme than Randy Lawson did with Spuller Stop. But then in Cars 1, you have Davey Apex, also at one point called Dave Alternators, and then TG Castlenut, one of the rarer Cars 3 stock cars because he was only released in a four-pack exclusive to Target, the four-pack that 
preceded the next gen four pack that was even rarer. And then last but not least is Aaron Clacker, who at one point was one of the rarest next gens because he was only in that Amazon five pack, but then Mattel reissued him from Thailand. And he is a super dark red paint, but I think it looks pretty cool. The Thailand version is a little bit brighter. Who am I going to go with next? Take your guesses. Take your guesses. All right, Cyball Shine, you look pretty good. Nice, vibrant yellow paint. One of the missing sponsors in Cars 3. So we have a NASCAR Next Gen here. Carson Ace Dillon. And the Cars 1 racer is Slider Petrowski. By the way, I'm going off memory for all these names. And I am nailing it so far. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but I... I have a pretty good memory. I say I know sometimes I goof up and I forget and it happens in the worst times and you know I call tailgate pile up and vice versa and people yell at me. But for the most part, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on the names of all these hundreds and hundreds of cars. But yeah, now these ones where we have a NASCAR next gen, their paint jobs are going to be much similar because whoever made the designs was just not as creative, probably Mattel not Pixar. <laughs> Same thing here with Fiber Fuel, Brush Kerber, and then you have Go Go Logano based on Joey Logano. Carson A. Dillon was based on Austin Dillon, all real life NASCAR drivers. You do have a little bit more red in this color scheme, which I like. I like Go Go a lot. I did pick up a couple of him because I like him. I also have a signed, I have two signed uh, NASCAR Go Go Loganos. Literally signed by Joey Logan. That was pretty neat. They were available on like his website. I don't know if they still are though. Here we have Mood Springs. Pretty simple deal here. Chuck Armstrong, Cars 1, who was, you know, the race damaged icon released in 2010. has become the rarest mainline release of all time. Then you have Doug Throttleman there in the middle, who I like a lot. Top 10 for Cars 3 stock cars. And then Ed Trunken, the next gen. Looks pretty good. The blue kind of lightens over time. Next up is one of my favorite sponsors, and that is Tank Coat. I don't know. I love when things look different, and just pink stands out, and it looks different. Eugene Karbareski on the left, Reb Meeker in the middle, and Rich Mixon is the next gen there, all sporting vibrant pink paint jobs. I like probably Eugene the most because I really like the white two-tone here in the center. Red Meeker is okay, I guess. And then Rich Mixon's pretty neat. I like that he's in the Cars 3 video game. And he's got pretty nice pink rims. He's also pretty rare, believe it or not. I should make videos on like the top 10 rarest, top 10 most desirable, stuff like that. I feel like that would be a little different and people would enjoy that. I don't know. Here we have Spearmint. So Eugene Karbareski. No, 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 no. Ernie Kearson is these two. And then this is Nick Shift, who is actually the second to last next gen to be released in 2021 here. He was released just over the summer. And then, yeah. Sorry, I don't know why I called them Eugene Karbreski. I think the E names just got me confused. I really like the Cars 3 Ernie. He's got a unique expression. I like the little slight blue trim on his rims. And just got a nice design overall. I think Ernie from Cars 1 could be a little bland. And I'm not a big fan of Nick Shift. I thought he would look much better. I thought he'd have a little metallic to him, but it's kind of a very bland cyan color. Here's a funny story. I actually wrote down that I wanted to do Octane Gain in both of the first groups. Like I put it down for Group A, and I didn't do it. Put it down for Group B, didn't do it. Didn't do it because I actually have a little cold right now, and my voice just goes kaput like that and so after about like 12 cars yeah it was done could not do another one but here we're going to start with octane gain he definitely deserves some attention because of the fact that you know we have bobby swift danny Suarez, and a nascar here all right so first of all it starts off with unfortunately the weakest link billy oil changer but he is probably you know the most vibrant of the bunch with this Nice orange paint job. Now, this is a factory custom. Just so you know, don't yell at me, please. I'm just using it as like a prop. I have a real version, but it was really chipped up. And I know I have other versions. Like I have like the 
Motor Speedway, the South version, but you know, the ones that were most accessible to me were the chipped up version and this factory custom. And I was like, Hmm, I weigh having a nice looking car more than a factory custom. But yeah, anyways, that's him. And then Bobby Swift, who got some speaking lines in cars three. Now he has a purple paint job or like a lavender and then a similar paint job here for Danny Suarez, although there is a variant where he is a little bit bluer. And then in the NASCAR line, he got this 99, so a new number to reflect real life, and a slightly different, you know, well, actually a very different paint job. He's now a very dark bluish purple, like an indigo, and different decals, of course. Looks pretty cool. I like it. I like it better than the other one. I just whacked my T. All right, let's go to Buzine next. So we have Ryan Shields from Cars 1, Buck Baringly from Cars 3, and then Michael Roeder who replaced him. I like Buck Baringly a lot. JS Cars 8 did a whole movie about Buck Baringly, which I think is pretty awesome. Definitely should check that out. Michael Roeder, not a big fan of him, but we're kind of getting into that stage of blue and green next gen. So let's just all hold our breath for a little bit. Try and get through it. <laughs> There's a lot. I mean, look at, look at, look at. Which I thought was a little let down. You know, they eliminated some of the best sponsors in terms of color. Taco Mint, Fiber Fuel, Sidewall Shine. Those all are very vibrant. But anyways, Four Wheel Drive up next here. So you have Johnny Blamer. I love him. He's my favorite Four Wheel Drive racer. Probably in the top seven all-time Pissing Cup Cars 1 racers. Then Timothy, no, 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 Tommy Highbanks. Oh, almost missed one. Tommy Highbanks is the Cars 3 FWD driver. And then Herb Kerbler is the next gen here, who I think has a pretty weak design. I don't know. Both of these aren't the best. I think they could have done something a little bit cooler with the landscape. You know, he always has this forest background. I feel like they could have done something interesting with that on the next gen. But I guess the conservative route was just to remove it for the sake of simplicity. Every single one of those had like black or gray rims. Johnny's is the black or gray rather. Just to knock out Jackson Storm here real quick. The Igniter next gen. We have no other versions of Igniter. No stock cars. No nothing. But of course he does have a NASCAR version I will show here as well. I think this is the worst NASCAR racer they've done just because he looks so similar. I wish they made him blue. Like I think that would be so cool to see Jackson in blue instead of black. Next up is Toe Cap, starting with Rusty Corn Fuel. And then you have Jack DePost and then JD McPillar. It's kind of like a dark purple sponsor here that gets a little metallic at the end with some headed colors in there, some green and turquoise which make him look a little different, makes him stand out. They're all pretty nice. I like Rusty Cornfield probably the most because he's got a nice two-tone going on with the white. Then we have Rev and Go, the only female Piston Cup racer that's not Cruz Ramirez, Misty Motocross. Then we have the unnamed, the only unnamed Racer besides the Cars 3 Apple stock car is the Rev and Go stock car from Cars 3, only ever released in a Target 11 pack. And then the third to last next gen released from Mattel here is Mafas Fong. So, yeah, lots of oddities going on with the sponsor Rev and Go. This is one of my least favorite sponsors, just gonna put it out there. My favorite of these three, though, is the Cars 3 stock car. This guy. I think he's got a nice expression. I think my fast falling deviates too much. I don't know why you go green with the yellow. I just feel like it looks too different. Sometimes they could pull it off. I'd say, I don't know, an example off the top of my mind, but hmm, let me think of one real quick where they really divert from the original paint job. Maybe like final toupee. They really pulled off, I'd say. Now here we have a Cars 3 only sponsor, Synergy. This is one of the new sponsors in the movie that starts with Lane Locke, who I would deem as the rarest Cars 3 stock car tied maybe with Bobby Road Testa. He was only in a Walmart five pack. And so, yeah, that makes him pretty rare. 
I think he's got a nice design. I like the number five. I like his rims a lot. Not a big fan of Eric Breaker here. This is Eric, right? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think this is actually Spiky Phillips. No. No, 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 no. This is Eric Breaker. This is Eric Breaker. I'm, I might be wrong. I think this is Eric Breaker, though. They switched the names on him and then the next-gen Little Torquey Pistons because they were in a two-pack and the names switched. And so I got confused. It confuses me. Come on. Give me a break. But yeah, there is that. Let's go to another Only Cars 3 sponsor, and that is Blinker here. Who I like a lot. You know, it adds a little color to the field with the orange. Starts with Speedy Comet. Nice design there. And then a NASCAR driver from Real Life Voices, Ryan Inside Laney here. Ryan Blaney, of course. And therefore, he gets a NASCAR release, who I like a lot because of the added blue. I think... This is a really nicely done next year. I mean, it's different on both sides, which I think is also something that adds value to them. Okay. Here we have Gaskets, who I think became weak over the years. I love Sage Vanderspin here, the stock car from Cars 1. Maybe it's because he was one of the last stock cars to be released from that movie, but I think Everyone loves the fact that there's literally like an ice cream sandwich on the hood there. I think that's pretty neat. I don't know why they absolutely destroyed that. <laughs> I mean, they put it right there on Rex Reveler here in Cars 3. But come on, put it on the hood. I think it's just so iconic. And also, this paint job is almost identical to this one, which is just wild when you think of Vinyl Toupee, whose paint jobs between Cars 1 and Cars 3 are drastically different. And then... You have here the next gen Dan Carcia, who is one of the other ones where I feel like they deviated too much. I feel like if they went red and yellow, it would have been really cool. But this dark blue and neon yellow, neon yellow, I don't like it. Not a big fan. You guys are getting my raw opinions here on these next gens. And unfortunately, we've hit a little streak of ones I don't really care for. Next up is... Ruby Easy Oaks for Easy Idol, Carl Clutchin, Cars 3, and then Harvey Rodcap. I actually like this next gen. And here you can observe a number change. The reason it goes from 51 to 15 is because Cruz Ramirez needs, needed that 51 for when she became the Dynaco racer to honor Doc Hudson. So therefore, you know, Easy Idol had to kind of take a preemptive change. Yeah, pretty nice. I like the sponsor. It reminds me of Vitaline and Tank Hope because they have like very subtle colors with a white two-tone. Carl Clutchin's okay. He was actually the last stock car I got for Cars 3 and allowed me to do that video I was talking about. And then you have Harvey Rodcap here, who I love the gunmetal gray. It's a change, but it's a good one. Here we have Gasprin, the final sponsor in the third group here. Both of these guys are Floyd Mulvihill. Not a huge fan of the Cars 1 version. I think it looks a little clunky. I don't know. Blue, yellow, blue. Very 2006-esque. I really like the Cars 3 version with all these floating pills. I think that's a really unique touch to him. And he is worthy of a zoom in and taking a closer look at here. I just like all this extra detailing. So yeah, he's pretty cool. And then I don't mind Richie guns it. I actually like that they added a little pink to him. That adds a little extra spice to him. He also has some of those floating pills in the back. So honestly, he is one of my, probably in the top half of my favorite next gens. All right, let's go on to the final group. Here we are, guys. We are in the home stretch. This video really symbolizes a lot, you know, and it really should because it is the embodiment of the completion of all of the next gens and the stock cars of all the Piston Cup racers. That's hard to kind of grasp for me. This has been a thing since 2006, like collecting the racers, and it's basically done now. Unless, of course, they make the Apple Racers or they make more movies. Now, of course, we'll have some more of the NASCAR racers like Bubba Wheelhouse gets a NASCAR edition. There's the Kyle Busch Hostile Takeover Bank Racer. But all the ones from the movies, you know, here we have them. 
I think that's pretty cool, but it's also kind of an end of an era. So I do want to take a moment to really appreciate this. Mattel was able to complete these lines despite the fact that they come up short on a lot of other lines. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I've been able to collect them all. I know I'm very fortunate for that. So I hope you guys, if you do not have them all and you want them all, you're able to get them. They're fun to collect. I love just hunting for things. And these definitely, some of them have become very rare. So I wish you the best of luck. But anyways, we're going to dive right in here with yet another Cars 3 only sponsor. A new one that is an Easter egg from Inside Out, the gum triple dent. So there are two variations of Terry Cargas here, the unaccurate or the inaccurate one, my bad. And then the accurate one from Thailand here, which I love. It looks more vibrant. The expression, even though it's pretty much the same, it just looks a little bit cooler and more refined, I guess you could say. And that's probably because there are lines now surrounding the eyelids, the eyeshadow and whatnot. Yeah, these both look really cool. All things considered. You can see a couple differences as well. You know, a little bit more blue over there. And then here it's kind of like that light turquoise. But yeah, certainly more vibrant, that's for sure. And then, of course, you have Cam Spinner, who is one of the most highly anticipated next gens to be released. A lot of people have forgotten about that. But because of the fact that he was in the Cars 3 Driven to Win game, people were clamoring for him. And Rich Mixon, too. But I just feel like there was more hype around Cam Spinner for whatever reason. He is a pretty cool next gen. Although they've always released him with these black eyelids. I don't really know why. I don't think they look super great. But he's gotten several other versions like Fireball Beach and whatnot. I think he maybe got another one. Yeah, he got the Rocket Racer. So yeah, there's a lot of other versions of these characters as well, but these are your standard ones. Here we have Transberry Juice. Now, it would be really interesting and fun if I had the NASCAR Bubble Wheelhouse because the sponsor has actually evolved. It's the first one to have ever really changed its name to Torqueberry Juice. Super weird. Don't know why. I mean, I could speculate, but we're not going to get into that here. It looks like a really cool racer. I can't wait to get it. It looks super purple. Almost kind of going back to Lee Revkins here, who is a much purer purple than Marcus Krangsler here and then Bubble Wheelhouse, all of which have black rims. And then the number goes to six because that is Bubba Wallace's real life number, or it was. I think it's now 23. So yeah, Marcus Krangsler is pretty rare. Bubba is as well. Haven't released him in a while. Here we have Clutch Aid. So this is Epic Green Thunder's favorite sponsor. And unfortunately, it's one of my least favorite sponsors. I'm not sure. I just don't really like the color scheme to it. I think Kevin Shift right over here is pretty cool. I like the white rims on it. I think it looks pretty nice. Dino Drafsky looks pretty basic to me. It doesn't look like much effort was put into it. He's got the classic cut on the hood where they put a band-aid over it. It's pretty interesting. But yeah, he's also pretty rare. He also has a metallic version as well. And then we have the next gen who was released at the beginning of 2020, Noah Gocek. I like a lot of green on him. It kind of makes him a little bit more desirable. And I like the C plus A logo there. That's kind of a little bit hard to discern at first. But once you see it one time, you can't really unsee it. All right. Let's go on to my favorite sponsor there. This is, I think, well, maybe Taco Mint. But right now, I think it is Retread. And that might be because of the fact that I'm biased because I was able to get the next gen or the canceled rather retread trailer that was supposed to come out in 2010. I don't have the semi cab, but I have the trailer. It's sick. I love it. And I just like purple and red. And this is kind of the combination of that with a lavender variation of purple. And then it was a missing sponsor in Cars 3. So we get a NASCAR version of him. Eric Ammer rolling here and they changed the color completely to blue which I was a little disappointed with at first but it's really grown on me I actually really like it now I think it looks pretty cool really stands out I like how the red also stands out better and you got red trim on those silver rims too so that is my favorite sponsor if anyone is curious we have another one off here and that's Dale Earnhardt Inc of course the racer is Dale Earnhardt Jr due to like copyright restrictions people talk about dale's stepmom like as weird as it sounds she has somehow the rights 
to his merchandise and she has been very strict on that. So that's probably why Mattel hasn't released him since 2009, I believe it was, 2009. And that version, slightly different model. This one is the Nitroy model that has the rubber tires and was also released in the Motor Speedway of the South set. Here we have a new sponsor for Cars 3, Combustor. Ship Gearings was one of the first Cars 3 stock cars Mattel released. I think that's pretty cool. It's got those green and white rims. Chris Roman is one of the rarer next gens. His single release has become pretty rare. And he was also one of the first cars ever to be released made in Thailand anew. Obviously, some cars were made in Thailand in 2006, but since then, no one has until 2018. I like his kind of matrix design there. It's kind of like a Tetris design, actually. I like it. But again, a bluish green next gen. What a surprise. As you can probably anticipate, this is another one of my favorites. Intersection, a new Cars 3 sponsor. So you have Jimmy Cables there on the left. Unfortunately, he's sporting an inaccurate reddish pink paint job. His color should be closer to flipped over here with that pink. Oh, well, even though they had a second chance with him when they released him from Thailand this year, he still got the red paint. Still looks okay, though. It's a good design. Flipped over is probably the rarest next-gen, I'd say, because he was only released in the next-gen racers four-pack and received no other releases outside of that, like all the other ones did. J.D. McPillar obviously went multi-pack, multi-pack single, Steve Slick LePage got in another multi-pack. And then, who was the other one in the pack? Jeez. Oh, Barry the Pedal. Yeah, Barry the Pedal has become so common now, you don't even associate him with the pack. <laughs> okay. Little Torquey Pistons. Probably my actual least favorite sponsor. I just don't feel it. I think it's definitely my least favorite next gem. But you have Ralph Carlo. He has both of these, Cars 1 and Cars 3. I like his Cars 3 design with the lighter blue there. I think it looks pretty good. They both look all right. I like the red rims. But I feel like the yellow just kind of taints the design a little bit. If they omitted that, I think it would look better. I always love the cartoon piston, though. He gets a little feature at here on the channel. Now, this is probably Spiky Phillips, then. <laughs> by deductions, process of elimination. And I just don't like this one at all. I'm not a fan. Now, I know the Thailand version is better looking than this, a lot of people say, but still, I just don't really care for it. At least they kept the piston on there, though, which is very unusual for the next gens to include basically any artwork from the stock cars. They pretty much eliminated all artwork and just simplify it down to the text and the number. And then maybe some sort of like abstract design like that, which I don't even know what that is. Well, I guess it's, is that supposed to be an L? Is this like a T and that's another T? <laughs> maybe that's what they were going for. I don't think anyone's realized that. Next up, we have Carbon Cyber, who will generally be seen as the taco mint of Cars 3 because it was the last sponsor to be released Technically for both, stock car and next gen. Bobby Rotesta was in an Amazon 11 pack. And so he was technically the last release, although I got him before Carl Clutchen, who was difficult to get because that guy was initially only released in Europe before he received the Thailand release the following year. Now my Jim Reverick I discovered is some sort of weird air because he's so much tanner than everyone else's. It's got like the sepia finish. I'm not happy with that. I'm kind of bummed about it, but oh well. It's like he's already been put in the sun for like 10 years, and yet, according to the base, he was only made about 10 weeks ago. All right, yeah, this one's still pretty neat, though, with the metallic blue on the sides there. And this is kind of a different shade of green, so I give Bobby Rotesta a pass. Look who remains. The one who remains. Kang, no, I'm just kidding. It's Apple. The prolific sponsor, the one everyone loves, that one everyone goes giddy about because it is so elusive. 
and obviously the only sponsor of the Piston Cup that is also a real life company that a lot of people really like. I mean, your phone is most likely an Apple phone. Mine is. So anyways, Mac iCard, this is a custom version, but you guys have seen the real one on my channel before. This is a really good custom though. This is not a factory custom. It's actually hand painted. So I could probably fool some of you guys. You guys might think it's real. But yeah, just a gorgeous, simple design. You guys already know. And then here's Jim Scavenger's custom Cars 3 stock car. A very over or underrated racer. Everyone just jumps right to the next gen. Doesn't give the stock car much attention. But who knows? Maybe they'll release this one before the next gen. It's possible. I'd like to see a name for him. And then we have JP Drive. Now this is a custom by Wacko Arts. So I reviewed both of these before. I also have a next gen from Jim Scavenger, but I thought I'd kind of split time. Just love the chrome silver rims here. And then just Wacko Arts did a really good job with his design. Super clean. And the expression is also really nice. Who knows? Mattel very well could release him. You know, when I say many of us anticipate Jim Rever to be the last I feel like many of us may be wrong because the Disney store and Tomica already released JP Drive. And trust me, if they release them, Mattel wants to get a piece. Something stopping them, some sort of licensing with Apple. But Mattel really should figure that out because they have done some wild partnerships in the past. I mean, they just dropped a Hot Wheel that crossed over with Gucci. If you guys don't know what Gucci is, it's a Italian... Yeah, it's an Italian fashion brand. Fashion, yeah, like they make handbags and scarves and stuff like that. So <laughs> if they can do that, come on. Mattel, you could find out some sort of partnership with Apple. I mean, I think they already have. I'm pretty sure Apple stores at one point sold the Hot Wheels ID cards that came in those boxes. So, I mean, there's already that as well. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this long, long video. I don't even know how long it ended up being because I recorded them all in clips. But let me know who is your favorite. Like it could be your favorite sponsor or your favorite specific racer. Mine is Retread. My favorite racer though? Ooh. I mean, do I have to go with Lightning McQueen. He is just the main character. You, I feel like it would be a sin to not go with Lightning McQueen. But feel free to go with someone else. It's not really a sin. <laughs> All right, guys. My voice is just about to die. This has been a wild night for me. Every single clip I took, I had to go drink some water out of the sink like a dog. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you again. I hope you enjoyed this long-awaited video. You guys can finally stop asking, or you'll probably keep asking and just not know I already did it. That's what a lot of people do with my face reveal. They're like, why are you going to do a face reveal? Or like, face reveal, please. I'm just over here like, Bro. Bro. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye now.